We're gathered to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us, though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all those who suffer through war and who are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. And so we listen to our first hymn.
Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his ch children. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, by whose command the order of time runs its course, forgive our impatience, perfect our faith, and whilst we wait for the fulfilment of your promises, Grant us to have a good hope because of your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Romans chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 6. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, 
though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. Whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we've now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? This is the word of the Lord. After years of fighting across Europe with devastation on an unimaginable scale, the guns fell silent at 11am on the 11th day of the 11th month, 1918. And we gather today on Remembrance Sunday, it's the Sunday closest to November the 11th, uh, Armistice Day, to remember all that happened. Nine million had died. But on that day, eventually peace had been achieved. It was supposed, of course, to be the war that ended all wars. And yet, just over 20 years later, a second world war began, a war that uh, some uh, may uh, remember, even if it's only uh, from childhood. Since 1945, there has not been a world war, but there have been many wars across the world. And today, uh, we're all aware of the pain and suffering of the people of Ukraine and other parts of the world, and the global effects that that war and other wars have had in terms of food and energy and other resources. War affects, of course, the lives of so many. But some people pay the ultimate sacrifice, and we are, are remembering today those who gave their lives for our freedom, whether that's in two world wars or conflicts since that time. As we remember, we also, of course, gather before a God who gave his life for us. Commenting on his military service, the retired senior military officer, General Lord Dunnett, said these words, in my business, asking people to risk their lives is part of the job, but doing so without giving them the chance to understand that there is a life after death is something of a betrayal. In our Bible reading this morning, we read these words, whilst we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. Now, those are fairly shocking words because most of us would not consider ourselves to be an enemy of God. The word reconciled means to have a friendship or relationship restored. In other words, left to our own efforts, we're not God's friends. And that's a shock because most of us try to live good lives as we see it and we try and do our best. The problem is that God is pure and perfect and even our best is not good enough. We mess up. We can't become God's friend by our own efforts. We need that re relationship reconciled, restored. We can't get to God, so he came to us. The, sec the good news is that whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The 16th century church leader Martin Luther spoke of a great exchange. On the cross, Jesus took our wrongdoing and gave us his righteousness. He took our rags and gave us his riches. He took our death and gave us life. Only a couple of months ago, our nation and many around the world mourned the death of Queen Elizabeth II. She'll be remembered for many things, but by her own acknowledgement, integral to her life of sacrifice and service, was her faith in Christ. Commenting on Jesus, she said these words, Although we're capable of many great acts of kindness, history teaches us that we sometimes need saving from ourselves, from our recklessness or our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. Jesus came into the world to rescue and save. If we accept his offer of rescue, then his death buys our freedom. His sacrifice means life after death for us and peace with God for eternity. And it's that glorious promise that the Queen Elizabeth II and indeed General Lord Dannett talking about. But it's not just a promise for the future, it's a promise for today as we recognise with gratitude the sacrifice of those who gave their lives for our freedom. And as we recognise the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, so in thankfulness we live for God and others. Remembrance should not be 
just observed out of a sense of duty. It's not just a display of respect before we go on and do something else in the day. No, it's to impact our lives. It's to change us. And as we reflect with thankfulness on the sacrifice of, of those who gave their lives, as we recognize that supreme sacrifice of Jesus who died for us, so we respond in a life of service to God and one another. Let's pray. God in heaven, as we remember those who've died on our behalf, let us never forget the great sacrifice that they have paid. And we pray too that we will be conscious and thankful for the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, who offers life after death and peace with God. Amen. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of others. We particularly uh, remember at this time those uh, from our own community who gave their lives uh, in uh, war or, or who died uh, as a result of uh, war. 
uh, we pray for those serving in the armed forces today. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. <laughs> Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our homes and our world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>